Hello everybody, Nathan here with a supplemental instructional video on how to use the single spherical camera doodad rig thing to put your own background and optional logo for 360 video when recording with a camera that actually doesn't do full 360 but does 220. Um, this would also work for 180 and I will show you the step to do for that if your camera is 180 instead of 220. So for starters, you'll see we have um, a pretty basic setup here. And I'm assuming you've downloaded this file. So you have a mesh of a sphere. It doesn't show the top half. Well, it's not really half, but that curved bit, but it's it's there. And then we have a big plane down here for the background and one in here for the logo. There's a pretty good chance this will be the screen you see when you start, but you actually don't need anything on that screen. So we're going to go ahead and change to the compositing screen. And this is where you'll be doing most everything. This is the the camera view, which is the big sphere there, the background plane, and we have the logo plane right in there. So as far as any kind of setup on this, it's actually very easy. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong one, that's why. I'm just gonna set that smooth. I forgot to do that before. You won't have to do it because it'll be set smooth in the download. Um, so we're gonna assume you want to change the materials on these three. So let's start with the sphere. And you'll see in the top half here, we have texture coordinates, all this stuff. You don't need to worry about any of it other than your image texture here. And what you're going to want to do is select your video. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to select an MP4 here, which is of a, it's 220 degree image. So we're going to select that. Uh, and we need to know the amount of frames that the movie is. And for some reason, the offset always goes to some crazy high number. Uh, you can figure out the frames by multiplying the frame rate by the um, the length. That's an easy way to do it. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to set it at 600. I know it's a lot higher than that, but we're just going to set it at 600 for the sake of this. And actually, if we uh, go ahead, didn't want to do that, change to material, you'll see we have this image showing on here. And if I jump in the timeline, this will eventually at some point refresh. There we go. See the the dog there moved. It just takes a couple seconds for it to find that frame and then display it on the mesh here. Uh, sometimes you have to switch which objects you're selected on for it to make the update, but it is working. Let's go ahead and jump to camera view. And um, this isn't really pointing upright like we would like it to. So we're going to go ahead and select the camera and we're just going to tap the R key on the keyboard and rotate it till that image is more or less pointing upright. And you'll notice as I rotate here, the logo and that background square are rotating with it. So the logo and the background image will always be displaying point, uh, upwards. So if we just go ahead and turn on our render here using shift Z to get interactive render, um, we see that, yeah, that looks pretty straight. I might want to tweak it just a little bit. That looks a little bit better. And then uh, we'll notice here we have our phenomenal backgrounds. I has logo and sick background. Yeah, I know, real quality stuff there. So let's change those. Uh, both of these are squares. So you will want to make sure whatever your image is, is a square, otherwise it will be distorted. And we're just going to click the little open image button here. And uh, we're going to pick an image. Now it should be square. I don't unfortunately have a lot of square images. So I'm going to open that one. All right. So now I have a logo of a different picture and this supports alpha. So if I had an image here, like I has logo that has alpha in it, this website header for my website, NathanSalpat.com has alpha. And uh, let me go ahead and change the alpha color to be white. And now that is alpha mapped on there correctly. And if we do the same with the background, the background does not support alpha because you theoretically would never have a background with alpha because then you would show nothing. So they will overlay quite nicely and you can use an image that doesn't have alpha for the logo. It just has to be a perfect square then. So, I mean, there's that, <clears throat> but that is pretty much all there is to the setup of this. Um, a few things that we do need to point out, and we're going to go back to the default screen for that. First off, you have to be using Cycles Render. If you're using Blender Render and you try to render this, it ain't going to work. 
because it's all set up to cycles. So, and it should, I think, default just say cycles because that's what it's saved with, but I'm not positive. So if you're rendering and you're seeing a gray screen, make sure you're using cycles. Um, and then if your GPU supports it, you'll want to turn on GPU compute. It'll make a render quite a bit faster. Uh, output options here. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to use FFmpeg video. So you'll just save your location there. Say you want to do FFmpeg video. Then you want to go to encoding and select your preset or just fill out whatever options you want there. And then, um, yeah, that's really it. The render samples only has to be set to one because the background here is emitting light. So this is rendered with one render sample. If I put that up to 10, uh, let's just take a look here. 3.93 seconds, changing it to 10. Let's render this out. It's looking the exact same. And it took 6.68. So it takes longer and there's really no advantage because everything is emitting light. So light doesn't need to bounce off of anything. Um, so I guess I could change all of these and possibly get even faster render time. 3.92, I think that's pretty much the same. So you definitely wanna make sure that you are using cycles. Uh, if you do want to do the audio from the video and export that with the Blender export, go to the video editing screen, plop your audio into here, which you do just by either using the add sound and then select your sound file or shift A and you can add sound, add your sound file and it'll play this sound file. And then you use that sound file when you do your mix down and you just use your audio codec of MP3. And then to render an animation, you hit the animation button or control F12 and that'll render your animation out and you will get an equal equi rectangular, is that how it's pronounced? Uh, image, which you will then have to, yeah, equi rectangular. You'll have to run that through the script from, uh, I forget if it's Google or YouTube who has it to make it, so when you upload it to YouTube, assuming that's what you're using it for, that it'll actually display as a 360 video instead of just a very wide video. Um, other thing to mention, uh, your start frame and end frame, you want those set to, well, whatever frame you're going to start rendering at and whatever your end frame is, pretty obvious, your frame rate. You probably want to just keep that at whatever your camera shoots at, but you could change it to get faster or slower speeds. And then your resolution should probably stay that, but depending on what resolution your camera shoots in, you may have to tweak it. And that uh, should cover everything for the single camera setup. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I uh, try to respond to all the comments on YouTube as quick as possible, and I'd be more than happy to help you out. So thanks for watching and uh, downloading the file, of course, because if you didn't download it, I don't know why you watched. And I'll catch you in the next one. And I'm back. I forgot to mention how to change this for if you have 180 video. If your lens only shoots 180 fisheye, pretty much, uh, it's really easy to make this adjustment, but if you've never used Blender, you probably wouldn't know how to do it. Um, all you have to do is, well, let me first explain. I'm looking at the quad view here. If you do control alt Q, you get to single or on the right hand side here. Um, there's an option for it someplace. Okay. Well, whatever the case, control alt Q will swap switch between these two. I feel like it's probably display. Yep. Toggle quad view right there under display. All you need to be is in a side view. And then you hit tab on your keyboard, go to edit mode, A to select and deselect. Everything will probably be selected, so A will deselect. Hit the B key so you can draw a box, click and drag. Select all of these lower ones, X key on the keyboard, and then delete vertices. And then we delete those. And then we go back to object mode, and now we have a 180 degree circle. Now when we render this, um, wow, it renders as a perfect square. Very interesting. I honestly did not expect that. But you will see that the background has to be made larger to cover that space. So all we do for that, let me go back to quad view here. 
we just select our background image. Oops, that's the logo, the background image. Tap the S key and scale it up just by pulling out. And then let's see, still not large enough. So let's tap the S key, scale outward again. Um, I think actually, no matter how large I scale that, yeah, it's never really gonna work. I'd have to scale it very, very large. Or we can just move the camera up a little bit into the sphere. And that'll probably make it work much better. Well, now we're getting a little more distortion on there. So probably you'd want to put the camera back or not even touch the camera. I should say not put it back because you wouldn't have moved it. And yeah, I guess just scale this out really big. I mean, it's just supposed to be for a background plate anyways. That scaled really huge and it's not helping. So we're going to try something different. Scale it smaller and pull it closer. Just going to give me all sorts of problems because of the logo and the camera, but let's try this. Yeah, I get tons of fisheye because it's so close. So you might just have to deal with a little black ribbon because it doesn't seem as if that really wants to go away. Uh, it is what it is. Things can't be perfect. But I just remembered that I had forgotten to put that in the rest of the video, so I had to record a quick clip for it. And now it's covered, so I'll leave you guys to it.